This is a video of a 2000 F-150 uh, extended cab, regular bed, I believe, uh, selling this truck for $1,500. Uh, truck's in really good shape body-wise. Um, we'll just kind of take a walk around, show you. Obviously, it's white and white with a utility cap. Uh, all those windows are supposed to open. Two out of three do. One is bolted shut. Uh, tires are okay. You'll absolutely need one tire. This is the one you would need for any kind of a sticker. They are all matching uh, Grabber AT2s. Size is 265 70 16. Uh, moving around to the front. It looks pretty decent. Uh, I put new headlights and uh, turn signal lenses in the truck. Only because the original ones were faded and just horrible like, like most of them are. Uh, grill's good. This bumper is tweaked on this side, but it's, it's not super noticeable, I suppose. But it's kind of tweaked in a little bit, you can see. Uh, moving along the side, the passenger side, you can see there's certainly some rippling in the door uh, and then a little bit in the rear door. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, I personally have not registered this truck. Uh, I drove it for a little over a thousand miles while I was moving just on a temporary plate. Uh, the thing did really well. It does have some quirks, which I'll try to go over in a minute. Uh, moving around. The rear bumper, uh, it does have a step hitch as well as a class three receiver. Um, the class three re receiver worked really well. Um, I do not believe the wiring harness is working, however, so just something to note. Uh, bed is in good shape. It does have a bed liner in it. Uh, and I apologize, but there's some construction material inside right now, some sheetrock and some copper, but uh, you can see the uh, bed liner is in good shape. The bed itself is in good shape and the cap is in great shape as well. There's no cracks at all anywhere in this fiberglass cap. Uh, both have a uh, moving window, the truck itself, as well as the cap, so you can still let some air in if you want to. Uh, tie downs in the corner of each one of the sides here, um, so you can tie down if you need to. These struts don't work, hence the vice grips. Let's see. And the locks don't work very well either, but at some point they will shut. There it is. Uh, you do have roof rack mounts, so if you guys wanted to do a roof rack or a ladder rack or something like that on the uh, cap itself, you could. Move into the interior. All four doors work. Uh, there's certainly no issues there. Uh, the back seat's a little nasty. These are the original headlights. Back seat just has some paint on it, but I mean, overall, it's all there. There's no rip, rips in the back seat. Floor's okay. Again, the paint carries to the floor. This is the only rip in the interior. Uh, which is pretty normal for these trucks. Uh, obviously the beeping works great. Thank you, Ford. Take the key out. <clears throat> uh, dashboard's all intact, no cracks, no rips, uh, no nothing. Um, the radio works very well. The heat works. The uh, AC does not work. Um, Five-speed manual, uh, four-wheel drive. Um, four-wheel drive currently does not work. Uh, this is a vacuum actuated front differential as anybody that's had one of these things is aware of they break so included with this truck is a brand new inbox uh 4x or 4x4 posi lock i believe is what it's called pretty easy to install and what that will do is it will bypass the vacuum actuated four-wheel drive engagement and allow you to have a cable operated four-wheel drive pretty much the way that this truck should have been i'll, uh, I'll take some pictures of the box itself so you can see the model number etc but uh, it's custom built for this truck so Four-wheel drive will absolutely work. Uh, it's just right now it does not actuate. Uh, truck itself has 227,000 some odd miles. Uh, high miles, but it runs okay. Really, the only thing that I've seen that's wrong with this truck is anytime you try to go beyond, say, half throttle, it starts to sputter a little bit, uh, and I'm not quite sure what's going on. The engine itself seems really strong. It starts, which I'll do in a minute, um, but it, it sputters uh, when you try to get into it. So it makes accelerating up hills uh, kind of difficult. Um, but like I said, I put over a thousand miles on it and in New Hampshire, there's certainly a lot of hills and I made it work. Uh, what I've done so far to try to correct it is uh, I replaced both coil packs. Um, so that's new as well as the uh, passenger side coil pack is also brand new. Uh, I replaced the IAC, uh, the idle air controller, as well as the TPS. The TPS did solve some issues with uh, with over throttling, but um, the main issue still remains where if you are pressing down more than halfway on the throttle, it gets a little wonky. I've read some things that say that can occur sometimes when you put in one of these. This came with the truck. I've cleaned the filter. I cleaned inside the tubes themselves, which were fine. Uh, this could be an issue. I have not replaced the map, um, but that could be one of the things that I've read about. 
Um, this wasn't sealed correctly, so forgive me, but it's plumber's putty, but it was sealing correctly now, so uh, it is what it is. Um, included with the truck again uh, are spark plug wires and all new uh, OEM Motorcraft spark plugs. I did take two spark plugs out uh, of this side just to check them. Um, and they looked okay, they were a little hot, but they were the Bosch Platinum 4 Pluses, I believe is what they are. And those things are known to give these trucks problems. Um, so I just haven't gotten around to doing them. Uh, I might, depending on how quickly or unquickly the truck sells, but again, Motorcraft OEM copper plugs and brand new wires, 8mm wires, I believe, are included. Uh, shut this up, we'll start it up. Here we go. So everything comes on, gauges all work. Uh, temp gauge, oil gauge, all that fun stuff does work. Uh, battery holds a charge very, very well. Um, no, no tack in this one, but you can see there's the mileage. So it just hit uh, 22 or 222,000. Uh, no cells are on, uh, so that's, that's a good thing. There was a cell before I replaced uh, the coil packs which did reference a random cylinder misfire. I believe I had one on number four and number six. Again, super common with these trucks. The coil pack uh, cleared the codes, but the, uh, the stuttering thing still remains. Radio works, as I had mentioned. There you go, radio. Uh, HVAC works, minus the AC, like I said. Uh, interior's okay, whatever, it's dirty. I mean, you can certainly clean that if you'd like to, but it's all there, it all works. Uh, manual windows, manual locks. There is nothing power in here other than the steering. We'll start driving it a little bit. Gets right up and goes pretty well. Get in a second, I'll try to show you the sputter in a second here. Not that you can feel it, but you might be able to hear it. All right, so I'm gonna start getting into it a little bit. hear that it, I mean it did okay that's a pretty steep hill actually I don't know if you can see it on the phone but it does okay it's just it sputters a little bit when you get back into half throttle or, or greater um, so it's kind of strange I'm not really sure what the issue is uh, that's the reason that the truck is so inexpensive not so worried about the four-wheel drive not working I probably would have put that posi lock in regardless um, they're known to be a, a great solution for these vacuum actuated four-wheel drive systems um, similar to like a Cherokee etc that they all fail uh, my plans were to put a plow on this. My plans have changed. I'm no longer going to plow uh, myself. So um, the truck is for sale. Like I said, $1,500. Uh, it's located in Richmond, New Hampshire. Um, the uh, phone number will be posted below the video. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.